in our world, which should reflect the will of the people, money gets placed above all else, above every instinct, desire, and dream. I long for the day any textbook Christian convinces me that you can live in a capitalistic society and still live letter by letter the word of God. I long for the day that any sane person convinces me that I do not inherently have a right as a human being to stand upon, walk upon, and dwell upon the land of this earth without submitting to another and or paying money, which includes a sacrifice of time, life itself, to a government entity over and over and over until death pardons me my debt. We all exist as a collective conscious that flows from outside of our physical bodies. Our ability to change the entire world around us closely resembles our societal role in democratic nations. Enough votes changes the system. Enough desires changes the world. Do you vote? Do you desire? The flaw in our democratic societies proves that government systems fail us every day as we have allowed the system to favor corporations and the mega rich instead of the common people. This corruption becomes foreseeable, predictable, and 100% correctable. Do we desire? This flaw in governmental systems gets reflected in our mentalities, but does not manifest naturally. In other words, a slave forced to work to meet the needs of others and occupy space on someone's property, becomes pacified, comfortable even, once placing aside his need for freedom to live and choose for his own concerns and accepting that the immediate needs of food and shelter get provided. We have become happy, ignorant slaves. We have accepted money as the root of all happiness, all security, and all well-being. We have accepted that we have no right to drink clean water. We must buy it. We have accepted that we have no right to fresh fruits and vegetables. We must buy them. Sure, we could grow our own food and raise our own livestock, but have not the time as we have accepted that we have no right to live freely in the domain we were born into. We must buy that space annually. We have accepted that we have no right to money, yet we must exchange it for the most basic of necessities. We must buy it. We have accepted that we have no right to manage our own time, as we must exchange our time for money. We must buy it. We have accepted our time, our life, as currency's currency. We have accepted life itself as the pursuit of money, money that we cannot own, money that we cannot keep, and money that will not keep us alive alone. We have become trained to exchange money for happiness, to live. Not only has this training dominated our very perspective on existing, it has taught us to assign value, to assign an individual's worth to this very currency. We have become trained to support the system of currency, to thrive in currency, and to protect the very structure of our economic society. When we meet people with lots of currency, we attribute our notion of success and happiness to them. Yet when we meet people with little currency, we attribute our notion of failure and insubordination to them. We blame them even for not possessing an adequate quantity of currency. Likewise, we feel threatened by anyone opposing the financial laws of existence. The very notion to not pay taxes, to live freely on our land while growing food and raising livestock to feed ourselves and create our own resources gets labeled as insane, idiotic, mentally unstable, utopian, a crack pipe dream. With recent interest in self-sustaining lifestyles, these same seemingly inerrant rights to life and living freely become in fact illegal and sometimes result in police, even military intervention. 
Ultimately, we have become trained to dehumanize ourselves and fight for that very right to become devalued. Human life preceded currency, yet currency completely dominates every aspect of our lives. We supply our own insistencies to perpetuate this philosophy. It costs money to eat, or the land does not pay for itself, or the government needs money to protect us. Contrary to popular belief, each statement reflects a cultural opinion, not a natural law of sustaining life. Not only do these lies prevent us from valuing our own life, look where they have led us. Money, which initially existed as an IRU of sorts, has morphed into an abstract concept. There no longer exists a set value to keep the system of currency bound to the limits of a physical, valuable object like gold. Currency now simply exists because we agreed that it exists. Furthermore, due to the ridiculous laws designed to suppress the common person even more, there exists more debt of currency than currency itself the amount that we agreed existed. This results when the entity that we decided could make money charges money to borrow money. If currency gets capped by the physical existence of a valuable object, like gold, then a loan to increase the amount of currency a person has directly reduces the amount of currency available and the whole economy as the beneficiary of the loan has received a larger portion of economy and the cost of the loan becomes property of the institution. Thusly, the very act of issuing a loan would suppress the economic power of everyone except the beneficiary and the institution. Our economic system does not work like this. If it did, loaning money would conceivably have been illegal from the very beginning. Our economic system actually does worse. When money gets loaned, the charge for the loan actually expands the economy without a physical representation of said currency getting produced, meaning the institution owns more money than currency to back it up. Although we already agreed that neither money nor currency exists beyond what the institution provides, beyond our beliefs. This economy dominating faith has led us to an inescapable system of financial servitude that eviscerates our humanity. Most cannot fathom this and may never admit to it. Beyond the absurdities of this financially oppressing system that we attribute to our greatness as humans, it has done even worse still. It has created familiar wealth that rivals, even surpasses, national wealth. It creates national or governmental wealth that far surpasses our perspective abilities. We talk about trillion dollar budgets as if we understand the concept of that much money. We now have corporations and governments that have amassed so much money that these entities could eradicate hunger and poverty. The rich have become so rich that all diseases could be cured, prevented even. Our country, through the wealth of itself and the corporate entities that thrive within it, could pay most people to stay at home and grow gardens and raise livestock on free land, making it so many lives are better, healthier, and even more spiritually sound. Does this happen? <laughs> Will it ever happen? No. Because we have accepted the system for the way it is. Because we have accepted that wealth gets rewarded with more wealth and poverty gets punished with more poverty. We accept that we should not aspire to live happily as a right concerning ourselves with only our needs of survival. We accept that we cannot share our land with one another without paying taxes and submitting to government. We accept money blindly, wholeheartedly. We admit that we have become lost without money and through money we become found. We admit that we have become blind without money and only through money can we see. A rose by any other name would smell just as sweet. We worship money and have the audacity to imprint in God we trust on the portion of it that physically exists. We worship money to live by sacrificing our very lives. We worship money because we have been trained not to think for ourselves, not to question the system. We worship money for very little benefit, if any, and cannot even admit to that sin. We worship money 
and still we cannot afford to live.